You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, your most gracious host. And today, I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor. I know you love that. From springtime, Atlanta, Georgia. Guess what? So grateful that you've joined me from all over the world today. And if you are listening to this recording, as I say every Sunday, it is a setup that is correct. The Spirit of God has attracted you here because you've been seeking, you've been praying, you have questions, you're searching. And today, I believe that this recording will give you some of the answers that you've been searching for. And as a result, I believe that I can say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me that your life will never be the same again. Well, how are you doing? I hope that you're having a great day, uh, afternoon, evening, uh, whatever time it is for you. And of course, you know, any day that you are living, it's a great day. And I always say this is the day that God has made and I'm going to rejoice, be grateful, be thankful, be happy in it. Well, I am back from my cruise and wow, what a cruise. Uh, We had such a wonderful time. Uh, People came from all over the world. Let's see, we had um, Chris and John and their little son Isaac all the way from Australia. Uh, We had people from all over the U.S. And you know, it is so wonderful. It is so inspiring and motivating to be around like-minded people. Uh, It was a little turbulent and a few people got seasick. Of course, I didn't. But it was wonderful, wonderful times. It felt great connecting wonderful food. We laughed and uh, our lives were simply changed. I know that I learned a lot and so today I'm going to share with you uh, five success tips from the Law of Attraction Cruise or five principles and show you how to use those or five steps to shift, align, and manifest your intentions. I I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And so it was really difficult for me to come up with just five. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about some of the speakers and then give you some of the pointers or the principles that they shared. And then I'm going to give you one exercise so that you can implement that particular principle in your own life personally, because you know, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's not what you hear that changes your life, but it's what you get a revelation of and what you implement implement into your own life. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Well, Let's talk about Richard Harper. All of you guys know Richard. He was a great speaker and he spoke on wealth consciousness. So as I share these principles, I want you to take notes. So if you need to stop this, if you need to go get out your iPad or get out your pad and your ink pen and whatever resonates with you, that is the spirit speaking to you, guiding you, trying to give you an aha moment. So I'm going to give you principles that they share. And then I'm going to give you exercises or how to's that you can implement it in your life. And I know that many of you say, Constance, I love that you give me how to's because I'm a how to girl. I just don't want to hear information. I want to know how can I take this thing and implement it in my life. 
<clears throat> okay, let's talk about Richard. He talked about wealth consciousness. Some of the things that he shared was wealth comes from your consciousness and is a feeling of unlimited abundance. And that means that it comes from what? The inside out. When you are conscious and aware of wealth, you can have everything. So what does that mean? That means that whatever your beliefs are around wealth and money, and he was specifically talking about money, uh, whatever you feel and whatever your experiences have been will determine how much money is in your life. He also said there are no limitations in wealth and abundance. Isn't that amazing? And actually that limitation does not exist. It's only in our mind and does not have power over your life. It's only what you're thinking about abundance and wealth that limits your life. Wow. So I guess a question that you would have to ask yourself is, are you limiting yourself by looking to your job? I think he said, never look to your job because God and your consciousness is your unlimited source. He talked about money is energy and is guided by your thoughts that you need to think rich. You need to feel rich and you need to live rich. I love that. And that money has an ear. That means that money hears everything that you say about it. If you say, uh, man, if I just get money in my hands, my, my, my hands start burning and I just have to spend it. Or it's hard for me to, to, to get extra money. Whatever you say, you know, is what you're going to uh, get. He talked about rewriting your story about money and taking a look at your blueprint. You know, you never build a house without a blueprint. You first have the blueprint and the foundation and the house is built from the blueprint. Well, your blueprint about money is on the inside of you. It, uh, uh, it, it's really a part of what you heard in childhood, what you heard your parents say, what your experiences have been, etc. So he talked about money vibrations are created in the now. So at this very moment that you're listening to this recording, if you're thinking, oh my God, how am I going to pay my bills? Or, you know, I don't know how, but there is an unlimited supply in the universe for me and it's coming to me now. So in this very moment, just think about you are creating what and sending out money vibrations. I loved it when he said, don't spend money, circulate it. You know, some people, they save their money. They say, I'm saving for a rainy day. I don't really like that saying. And then when a rainy day comes or when they need it, they say, I don't want to, I don't want to touch my savings. I don't want to dip into my savings. And really that's a fear based uh, vibration. And so he said, you should never think of spending money, but you should think of circulating. Circulating means that when you release it, you know, that it's going to come back to you. Um, I love that when he talked about that there is a conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. And your superconscious is your God mind, and it is beyond your subconscious. And what happens is your superconscious clears the path for your life because it's not moved by your five senses. It's not your superconscious is your God mind. It's spirit. It's not moved by what it sees, feels, touches, etc. And so really when you tap into your superconscious, would you do that by meditation? You do that by prayer. You do that by silence. You do that by many times reading your Bible or reading other inspirational information, you tap into that uh, super conscious. And he says that it downloads what you need to really overcome a lot of those limiting beliefs in your subconscious. Isn't that interesting? And he said that he feels that you should go all day, all day long saying, I have money, money, money. I have plenty of money. I have money, money, money. And what you are doing there is you are declaring, you are affirming, etc. So 
the exercise that I want you to implement for what Richard talked about was I, I want you to find out what your um, blueprint is around money. And you can tell what your blueprint is by your pattern with money. So take a look at your childhood, what was said, uh, what were some of your experiences, what your parents said, uh, what your thinking was and is at this point. And so once you find out what your blueprint is, I want you to change your money vibration by replacing it with a new money blueprint. And, and you do that by focusing in on what the new is. There is a unlimited supply in the universe. Do you believe that? And so you can find simple affirmations or money declarations and begin to speak them out, sending out the, the new vibration that you want, replacing those old beliefs, what? With the new beliefs around money and affirm it daily. And remember, it's not your responsibility to bring it to pass. It is the responsibility of the spirit, of that super conscious mind to bring it to pass in your life. <clears throat> okay? Well, that's what Richard said. So let's talk about what Cassie Parks, and I just loved her presentation. I was taking copious notes. <laughs> uh, Cassie, she talked about how to live in your probability or your intention or your dream before it manifests. And, you know, that's similar to what James Powers talked about when he talked about how to live your prayers just like it already manifested. She said that she that most people are thinking too small, that we need to start thinking big and going big. I, I think there's a saying, if I can remember correctly, go big or go home. And uh, that you need to break the habit of being yourself and thinking small and recreate the new you by thinking big. And, you know, just because you think big doesn't mean that you have to bring it to pass. And, and so she talked about and I talked about that there are unlimited probabilities, but it's the one that you live in, that you focus on, uh, that you think about that comes to pass. So the she shared about in-depth scripting or writing. And when you script or write, that is how you become big in that probability. So I'm going to give you an example uh, of um, what that would look like. And so, of course, you're going to be writing in the past tense. Uh, she said you should be using lots of feeling words and lots of gratitude uh, and you're going to be breaking your intention down and scripting only small portions of your dream so that you can feel it. You're not going to do your whole dream. So I'm going to give you an example of what that would look like for somebody who wanted a new job or a different career. So we, you're writing in the past tense. So you're writing as if it had already happened and that you're, you're writing with feeling and with gratitude. Okay, this is an example of, of what it might look like if someone wanted a different job. I wrote this. I woke up this morning feeling rested and grateful. As I opened my eyes, I felt the sun piercing through my window on my face. I was so grateful to God for seeing another day. You see the gratitude in there? I walked downstairs and began the process of making coffee. I looked around my beautiful kitchen and was so grateful for living in such a beautiful place. As I made my coffee, I love the, the wonderful aroma and smell of it and just enjoyed slowly sipping it. I then ate my breakfast, which was tasty. It felt so awesome to feed my body nourishing food that makes me feel healthy and gives me the energy and vitality that I need to begin my day. I then walked downstairs to my office. That's right, my office in my home. And I'm grateful to have a thriving, successful business while giving value to others. 
It feels so great to be living in the middle of my dream. As I open my emails, I'm grateful for all of the orders that I have from all over the world. The freedom that I have to work from home, spend time with my family, is truly living the life of my dreams. Thank you, God. Now, I, I just wrote that. You notice how that was in the past tense? So so that's what you I want you to do with your life. And, and I didn't describe the whole hoopla of your life, but you're going to break down uh, whatever your intention is and you're going to write it. Could you feel how excited I was and how grateful I was? Because remember, you're going to be lo- using lots of feeling words. Like I said, I woke up feeling rested and grateful. Uh, You're going to be using lots of gratitude words. As I walked down these steps into my kitchen, I felt grateful for living in such a beautiful place. So choose one. It can be weight loss. It can be more money. It can be a new career. It can be be attracting love. And you're going to be writing it in the past tense. You're going to be grateful. Isn't that exciting? And so can you see how that will really help you to live in your probability? She really suggests doing that uh, hour a day. You're just writing out in the future tense what your life will be like, what your life will feel like, uh, what the experience will be for you. And can you see as you write that out, you, you begin to feel that. And what is that doing? That is putting you right in the middle of your probability. It's putting you right in the middle of your dream. A great example of that would, would be me when I flew out to LAX, Los Angeles, for my international clients. And so in my own mind, I had already scripted what it was going to be like. It's going to be a great plane ride, and it was. Uh, everything was going to go easy. It did. Jules picked me up. I got on the ship just effortlessly. Uh, they treated me very kindly. A great, a great service. I had a great room. Um, the audience loved me. Uh, I had a great flight back. When I came home, my dog Angel was excited to see me. But see, in my mind, I had already scripted that. So what are you doing? You're taking control of your thinking. You're already scripting something in your thinking. So remember a couple of weeks ago, I talked about deliberate creation. Why not make a decision that I am going to script out what I want? So when you script it out or when you write it out, you you, you read it, you feel it, you see it, and then it's easier to visualize it. I just love that technique that she shared. So I'm going to really encourage you to go on her website and just uh, listen to some some of the shows. She's on the Law of Attraction Radio Network. I know many of you listen to me from iTunes, iHeart, Blog Talk, Spreaker, Stitcher. But if you actually go on the Law of Attraction Radio Network, you can see all of my shows and, and all of the shows of the other hosts. Okay, so let's talk about Pam Grout. Many of you know Pam. Uh, Pam is a New York Times best-selling author, Hay House best-selling author. She's the author of E Cubed and E Squared, where she talks about the science behind the law of attraction. And, you know, I just love it when people talk about the science because I think God is just trying to get to us truth. And so for those people who may not have faith or who are very analytical or rational, they may say, I don't believe this law of attraction stuff. It's just a a bunch of uh, euphoric stuff. But in fact, when people can see hard facts 
and they can see the science behind it is very, very powerful. So, so Pam, I just love her. She's so down to earth. She's so earthy. She's extremely successful. She said that she's written 17 books and um, her books are on Amazon and everybody just loves her. And so in her books, she shares uh, energy, do it yourself experiments that prove your thoughts create your reality. Okay, come on, people. We all know what that our thoughts create our reality. So she has some do it yourself experiments. And she shares different stories about how people uh, have used these experiments to really shift and change their lives. Uh, She shared a little bit about how to release negative beliefs that have been just drummed into us uh, so many times and that we are always creating our own reality either by default or intentional. Oh my goodness. Think about that for a second because that means that if you are not intentionally Every day, shifting and changing your thinking, I call it thinking on purpose, you're going to keep getting the same thing. Because, you know, statistically, they say that 80% of what we think every day is just repeated thoughts. And so if somehow we can begin to interrupt those thoughts and put the thoughts that we desire, thoughts and feelings and beliefs that we desire we will what create a different reality. Uh, she talked about taking baby steps to really gain confidence about the law of attraction so that you can see that they actually work. I call it the law of momentum. You know, when you manifest one thing, it makes you say, aha, if I did it over here, then I can do it with this. And that's why I suggest that you start with one thing, that you manifest that, and then that gives you momentum and confidence and more trust in God, and then you try something else. And she she really emphasized that we have the power to create new possibilities. Oh my goodness, just think about that. That maybe things have not been going well for you, but at this very moment, God has given you the power to create new possibilities. So this is what she had us to do. She had us, she had written down all kinds of things on a little piece of paper. And we all chose one. Some people might have chose a red pen. I chose a fly hat. Fly means a really, you know, good looking hat. Somebody else might have ch- chosen uh, a black dog. And so the whole principle is whatever was on that piece of paper, you just begin to set your intention on that. Just practicing using the science behind the law, let's just say a black dog. And you're not even around any dogs in your neighborhood, but you just put your intention on it. And then two days later, you see what a black dog, why? Because that's where your intention is. And when you put your intention on something, the entire universe comes to assist you. So your exercise for what Pam said is write down one thing and make it real simple. I mean, I don't know what it is. Write down one thing that you want to manifest. Make it really small. It might be a yellow rose or a pink diamond or a feather, write it on a piece of paper and just begin to focus in on it. A yellow rose, a yellow rose. And over the next couple of days, because your intention and your belief and because it was something small was on it, you'll manifest that. And then you'll say, wow, if I can manifest a yellow rose, then I can manifest this. So you write it down. You begin to believe it. Of course, you expect it because we know the power of expectation. 
And that's the way that you can begin to use and really understand the science behind the law of attraction. That's very powerful. Guess what? I forgot to take a commercial break. So uh, let's take a quick commercial break and then I'm going to be right back with, with some more wonderful tips uh, that we learned on the Law of Attraction cruise that you can implement in your life when today. So stay tuned. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Okay, I'm back. And guess what? I forgot to mention uh, my gratitude and thanks to all of you who have made a donation to the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show so that I can continue changing, shifting, uh, and sending people just universal principles that that are really changing their lives. So I know this show is blessing you. I know that it is nourishing your soul. And if you feel led, you can go to my website page, fulfillingyourpurpose.com and click the red donate button in the right hand corner. And I'm going to say thank you in advance. Also, if you're interested in coaching, you can just click under coaching. You can read all of my testimonials from people from all over the world, many of whom I met for the first time in person on the cruise. Of course, you know, meeting someone in person on the cruise is a lot different than Skyping or doing FaceTime with them. And if you're ready for a change, ready to make an investment in yourself, then uh, please take a look at my coaching packages. Well, I'm back and we're talking about some of the principles that uh, that was shared on the cruise. And I'm teaching just giving you just highlights of what was taught. And then I'm giving you some how to's. <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk about a Gary who teaches the teachings of Joshua. And so once again, you need to go on LOARadioNetwork.com and listen to some of these shows. So the teaching of Joshua, uh, they believe that you should, you create your reality and that you should live in bliss. And these are some of the things that Gary shared, shared. <laughs> he didn't share it, he shared them. Okay. If you were aware of the way your reaction shaped your future reality, you would master the art of reaction. I loved it when he said that. So when somebody says to me, oh, Constance, they just make me so mad. I say, nobody can make you mad. No one can make you upset. No one can get on your last nerve. You choose to do so. Okay. Uh, they talk, He talked about feeling as a reality. Uh, you were meant to feel good, so start demanding and expecting to feel good every day. Move toward feeling good. And so, you know, instead of saying, oh, my God, it's another day, I have to commute. And he gave a great example of someone who, uh, a husband who might leave his socks on the floor and his wife might just sort of nag him and say, my God, you leave your socks on the floor. But another way to look at that would be joyful because at one time you might have been single living in the house by yourself. And uh, now you have this wonderful person. They may leave their socks on the floor, but you do have love in your life. Uh, he also shared you would not be able to truly love another until there is equal amount of love for yourself and that loving yourself is the first step in radically changing your approach to life. I tell people whatever you want, you need to give that. 
Uh, next, he talked about when you act out of love, you are performing the highest version of yourself. I love that. That is very powerful. Uh, you are here to expand your power, just not to exist. He also shared that the universe knows what you want. And when you begin to bring yourself in alignment with your desires, that the universe or God has a million ways to get things to you. So you can just chill, sit back and relax and let things work for you. I say it's really trusting God because with our finite minds, we don't know enough. There's a verse in the Bible that says, who can fathom the ways of God? Wow, there are so many different ways. And then he talked about you can choose to see the positive in everything or you could choose to see the negative in anything. Your emotions let you know where your focus lies. And if you've noticed in the common thread of focus, attention, uh, changing your thinking, uh, even everything that Cassie asked us to write down, and even what Richard Harper said about speaking out affirmations and writing your affirmation. All of that has to do with focus because the law of attraction says whatever you continually focus in on, feel and believe, eventually that will be your experience. And then I love this last one. Focus is the steering wheel of your mind. Wow. So this is the example that I want you to do for this one. Since the teachings of Joshua really focuses in on feeling good and moving toward bliss, I want you to just write a paragraph uh, about your life. What would bliss look like for you? What would, If you were in a blissful state, what would that look like? How would you feel uh, living a life uh, of bliss? Uh, what kinds of things would you will, would you be doing if you were living a life of bliss, etc.? So those are some of the principles from the teaching of Joshua. And, and you know, we're all saying the same thing, but just in, in a different way. Richard talked about wealth consciousness, and it all goes back to beliefs and feelings and experiences and the way you think. So we're all giving you tools so that you can learn how to focus and meditate and align and recognize and awaken to what's already yours. <clears throat> Dr. Michael Perlman, I really enjoyed meeting him. He has been on my show, but meeting him in person, he's, he's quite brilliant. I th he's an MD uh, and a psychiatrist. And I think I think Michael said, he told me to call him Michael, uh, that he's been in practice about 25 years. And so at Harvard, so that means he's quite brilliant, but he was just really down to earth, very earthy, uh, very easy to talk to. So he talked about, here we go again, the power of journaling with the law of attraction. Uh, he says he believes some of the principles that he shared were, were Words that are written in your journal remain for your consideration and focus meditation. Wow, just think about that. So, you know, Oprah does that. And I share with you how Pete Adams said that he does the same thing. And so do I. When you go back and you read your journal, today was a great day. Had wonderful lunch with friends. Uh, just had so many wonderful things happen to me, etc. A great example of that was when I flew back from Los Angeles. I just wrote down all of the things that I was grateful for from the trip that I met great people, that I felt deeply connected, that my PowerPoint presentation worked well, uh, that my plane flights were great, even though it was a little turbulent coming back to Atlanta, that uh, Angel was well taken care of while I was gone, that uh, I my baggage arrived on time. And just an interesting story, you know, I had already scripted out how I wanted my trip to go. When I arrived back at Atlanta, uh, the young man who was picking me up, I said, that's my bag because I had two bags. And I, we were going to the parking lot and something in me said, I don't see your, your tag. 
and I unzipped the bag and I saw something pink and I'm like, oh my God, I got the wrong bag. And so that was spirit guiding me and talking to me. So we took the bag back and we got my correct big bag. So why did that happen? I believe that it happened. One thing is because I had already declared and decreed. I had already spoken out of my mouth that everything goes perfectly. That, my, you know, the bag, I get my bags on time. You know what it's like to fly and your bag is on, a, on another flight, etc. And so I, I had already journaled that prior to leaving. And so when I arrived back, I just rewrote everything that I was grateful for. So Dr. Perlman is talking about writing down in your journal what you want for your consideration. He says that when you do that, you separate the goal from the negative stuff of the language of your life. So he believes that when you're writing, you're actually writing the language of your life. You can see in black and white, you know, how you feel about things, uh, how you feel about your life, etc. Uh, that journaling helps you to get clear about your desired results. It's just something about seeing it in black and white, right? I got that out. Uh, it helps you to manifest the essence of what you are meant to express. And, and the Bible even talks about write the vision and make it plain. And you've heard me say many times that when you write or script, that it's a form of prayer. That's why when people tell me that I have my goals in my mind, you know, there are too many intrusions in our thinking. There are too many issues and problems and challenges that many times dilute our thinking. But if you have a vision written down, even in the midst of white, what might be difficult times, you can take a look at that and you can just get a clear picture of what you want. And I'm still amazed at how many people do not have their intentions written down. And so he also says that journaling uh, develops the skills needed to balance your heart desires from your conditions, thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. I love that because, you know, we are conditioned maybe to think a certain way. But when you journal it and write it down, you say, oh, this is what I want, not what I have been thinking, not what my past experiences have been, not what I've been feeling emotionally or what my beliefs have been. And so it really brings to focus what your heart desires are. And it what helps you journaling helps you to remain to focus in on and to consider and meditate on only what you desire. I love that. And so, and lastly, he said that we can practice the art of, of journaling to really address and release the grip of unwanted circumstances. Let me just give you an example of that. Let's just say, I tell uh, people who are looking for relationships, write down what you desire. We're not looking for Miss Perfect or Mr. Perfect because that doesn't exist. And so writing down what you want really makes it very clear about what you don't want. I like what Michael Ogier said, who I interviewed at the very beginning when I started my talk show. He's out of Canada on the law of attraction. He makes it very simple. He has a technique where you write down what you don't want and take a look at that because once you see what you don't want, then it makes it a lot easier, easier and clearer for you to define what you do desire. I don't like the word want. So Dr. Uh, Perlman just believes that journaling is so powerful. So what I want you to do is, <clears throat> I want you to take this exercise. I want to write down, get a journal, or a piece of paper and write down, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling sad, sad, happy, anxious, excited, uh, frustrated? Just journal how you feel and what are you doing? You're writing out the language of your life. 
then write down what you desire to experience and then as he said uh, you can meditate on on the new languaging on the new words on the new experience that you desire and as you do so your brain changes and so does your life you got that and so that is the power of journaling with the law of attraction. I mean, it's so powerful. And so ladies and gentlemen, all over the world, just think if you would just take one, <laughs> one of these exercises that I am sharing, how could these exercises begin to change the landscape of your life? Because just hearing is not enough. You have to do and last but not least, da -da, I'm going to share some of the things that I shared. Of course, I talked about the power of the subconscious, change your mind, uh, change your world. And uh, I really talked a lot about how the mindset is formed. Whatever you believe, will begin. To, you'll begin to think about it. Whatever you think about it. Whatever thoughts you choose, you'll begin to feel it. Whatever you continually feel, you'll begin to choose and you'll take action. You need to write that down. So when you change what you believe, it's going to change your thinking. When you change what you think, it's going to send out a different vibration out into the universe. When you change what you think, you're going to change what you feel. When you feel different and your vibration is different, you're going to choose another action or another consequence. Because remember, you cannot attract something that's not in your vibration. If you X, but you're looking for why, you need to get in the vibration of why, and then that will come into your life. So I said that everything already exists. You've heard me say that, and we are only aligning, recognizing, and awakening to what's already ours. And I gave an example of every day when we wake up, all probabilities exist, and it's according to what you choose. So it's choosing. It's thinking, it's putting your attention on, and it's getting results. So it's choosing, it's thinking, it's putting your attention on that, and it's getting results. Okay, and I also shared that, you know, just making small changes in our subconscious that God can cause the smallest things to work for you, and uh, he can multiply, he can make things be. So never be concerned about starting small. Start with five minutes. Start with journaling five minutes. Start with writing out your vision for five minutes. Start small and what uh, it will increase. I talked about not limiting yourself and trying to figure out the way things are going to happen. Just set your intention and the manifestations will come. And Initially, if you don't really know what you want, you can set your intentions in a very general way. I want to be happier. You know, I want to motivate people. I want to help. And the more more general you are, the more you begin to think about it, the more what details that will come to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to learn how to rest and know that God loves us and he's going to give us the desires of our heart and specific instructions. I mean, those of you who have children, I mean, if, if your teenager call you and say, mom, what's the shortest way to get to ABC? You wouldn't say, well, I'm not going to tell you that. And God is the same way. The spirit of God loves you, adores you, and will give you the specifics that you need in any area of your life. I believe that the more you struggle, the more your manifestation stays away from you. But when you rest, God works. When you rest, God works. When you rest and trust, I believe that the, the more supply flows to you. And resting doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. It means that you're doing something, but you're not anxious about it. I really expanded on that powerful subconscious mind. It takes everything literally. If you say, I'm tired, I'm broke, I'm lonely, your subconscious mind says, oh, okay, 
you want more of that? Let me give that to you because uh, it accepts your dominant thought and feeling as true. And it does not know the difference between what is imagined and what's real. That is so powerful. I mean, if you took that one principle, you could just sit up and begin to dream because your subconscious mind will only take what is imprinted on it or in it with emotion. So why not deliberately begin to think about how happy you are, how healthy you are, how blessed you are, how you're changing the world. I also talked about um, stop limiting God, that the universe is limitless, it's inexhaustible, and it knows no bounds and has no confines. And you limit what you manifest into your life by what you believe. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of like going to the ocean with a spoon or with, a, I don't know, a big dump truck where you can put more water in there. So it's up to you. And as Cassie said, let's go big. Let's think big. You don't have to know all the hows, but but your job is to just what think. Uh, I reiterated on thoughts become things and they have the power to objectify and produce real substance in your outer world. So thoughts are important. And here we go again. It's what you put your attention on. It's what you focus on. That's why when we say affirmations, we're focusing in only on what we desire. Dr. Perelman talked about journaling. What are we doing? We're focusing. Cassie talked about scripting. What are we doing? We're focusing. The teachings of Joshua focusing on bliss and feeling good what are we doing we're focusing we're choosing we're setting intentions on what we desire oh everybody loved this one when I said this one that your mind is always arranged in the image of all you believe and consent to be true so wealth is a mindset health is a mindset love is an arrangement of your mind great example of that would be when i returned back to atlanta uh, a friend of mine needed some cough drops and some cough syrup so i went to the pharmacy and they know me at my uh, I, they know me at the drugstore not the pharmacy and they, they said miss arna was your trip good i said yes it was and so when she saw me getting the cough drop she said oh you must have gotten a cold i said i never get a cold it's so interesting because my mind is not arranged in the area of, of not feeling good and sickness. That was her thinking. So your mind is arranged. So once again, it's what you think about, is what you believe. Nobody can do that but you. You will have to choose moment by moment. You have to consent to this is what's true. The Bible says whatever, whatever is good, whatever is a good report, whatever is virtuous, whatever is wonderful, whatever is exciting, think on these things. I talked about thinking on the solution and not the problem. James Power shared that. We're not going to pray the problem. We're not going to talk about the problem. We're not going to talk about woe is me. We're only going to focus in on what we desire. I also shared that when you do your affirmations or confessions and when you pray, it just activates what is already yours. Because remember, you already have all things in another realm. But when you confess, when you affirm, when you pray, it activates what is yours and brings it into this physical realm. So really, you're not really trying to make anything happen. I'm going back to that. You're just aligning. You're waking up like you know aha now I see this now I understand this and I love this one I said we don't need any more self-help we need more God's help wow so you're co-creating co-creating your life with God make sure that you co-creating and not creating your own life by itself reach out to God Pray to spirit. God, I need your help in this manifestation, you know, etc. So you are co-creating. Uh, something else I talked about having a good mindset is the way to change your subconscious is good things happen when you know how much God loves you. 
And so when you know how much God loves you, you expect miracles every single day. I, I reiterated meditation and that when you meditate, you really lose your mind. How many of you know you lose you lose your old mind? You you lose your your mind of what used to be. You you use you you lose your mind of what has never happened before. You lo you lose, I got that out, your carnal mind, your five sense mind. And you move into the, another realm of meditating, of imagination, of, of I already have it now with your imagination, you know, and your words. And, and so, you know, just, just by listening, be honest with yourself. I mean, how many of you are, are actually implementing these things in your life. Um, I met somebody on the cruise and they said, Constance, I'm trying. And I said, well, uh, you need to take trying out of your vocabulary and you need to do. You know, and so, you know, you just need to do. And, and so doing means I'm committed every single day to meditate. So somebody asked me on a cruise, well, what is meditation? And meditation is different for everybody else. I, mean, I think it's a quiet time. I think a meditation can be reading. You don't have to be sitting with your legs crossed saying, mm, uh, you know, it, whatever it means to you. But it is a time of silence because you've heard me say at least 100 times that there is profit in stillness. And lastly, I really talked about um, gratitude and how praise and gratitude changes your focus. And Pam Grout and I had a great discussion about gratitude, and she was just saying that uh, she believes that that's one of the reasons I asked her, I said, how did you get a New York Times bestseller? Were you praying for it? She said, no, I was really in a better place of joy, happiness, and gratitude. And so, once again, journaling, writing down, and, and, and thinking, you need to be in a place of, thank you for what I do have. Thank you that you did this for me. Just grateful for the life that you have now as you begin to move toward the life that you're believing for. You can't just be so oh, dreading your life and, oh, my God, I just hate my life, and then expecting for big things to appear. Gratitude is so major. How many of you every single day write down what you're grateful for? Another thing that Pam shared was that every day, I think she calls it her posse, <laughs> that uh I think she has three friends and they text each other three things that they are grateful for. And they can never text the same thing. For example, if, the, if they say, I'm grateful that I've lost 10 pounds. Um, they can't text that in the, anymore. They have to text something different. So can you see how something as simple as that, they are texting each other and uh, they may not even see each other, but you're putting yourself in the most powerful vibration that there is. So, Wealth consciousness, you're going to do what you're going to really find those wealth affirmations. And with Cassie Parks, you're really going to script out. It's going to be feeling words. It's going to be um, past tense because we, we were writing what, what's in the future. I got that out for the nowness of our lives. Uh, and then Joshua really talks a lot about living in bliss and creating our own reality. Dr. Per Perlman talked a lot about journaling the language of your feelings, putting it on paper so that you could see it. And I talked about changing your mindset, changing your subconscious, changing your world. Well, that's really good. So see, you didn't even go on the cruise and you are really getting a feel for, you know, some of the information that was shared. 
Well, this has been really great. Uh, once again, I want you to tell your friends about the show. One lady said, I've told all five of my friends about the show. So tell people to go to the network, LOA Radio Network.com, and listen not only to me, but to all of the hosts. And of course, my website is fulfillingyourpurpose.com. I, I have articles on there. You can take a look at my coaching testimonies. You can take a look at my store. In my store, I have affirmations on prosperity, on success, on self-love, on attracting love. And of course, I have two books, Attracting Genuine Love and Secrets of Success. Would love for you to work with me so that I can partner with you to help you begin creating an extraordinary life, the life of your dreams. You know you were created for it. Well, once again, this is Constance Arnold with the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Thank you so much for listening today. And as I say every week, God loves you. You know I'm crazy about you and loves you. And remember this, the best is yet to come. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say.
old-fashioned hotline. Hi, this President's Day, my family wants to exercise our right to cute new styles. I vote for Old Navy. Old Navy? Yep, the new styles you want now are up to 50% off store-wide. Get new tops, new dresses, and new jeans for the whole family on sale now, including women's rock star jeans. Up to 50% off store-wide? And buy online and pick up in-store for free. Jeans start at just 15 bucks for adults, 10 bucks for kids at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Now that's democracy in action. Rush in for up to 50% off store-wide. Hurry, ends tomorrow. Valid 211 to 218. Select styles only. Hi, Fashion Hotline. Hi, this President's Day, my family wants to exercise our right to cute new styles. I vote for Old Navy. Old Navy? Yep, the new styles you want now are up to 50% off store-wide. Get new tops, new dresses, and new jeans for the whole family on sale now, including women's rock star jeans. Up to 50% off store-wide? And buy online and pick up in-store for free. Jeans start at just 15 bucks for adults, 10 bucks for kids at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Now that's democracy in action. Rush in for up to 50% off store-wide. Hurry, ends tomorrow. Valid 211 to 218. Select styles only.